Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY video with top international IT executives. I have with me Brad Peters. He is the Chief Product Officer and co-founder of Burst.com. Welcome to the program. It's great to be here. So probably best to start off by, first of all, congratulating you on winning an award for Burst 5X. It was recognized as one of KM World's 2015 trend-setting products. That's Knowledge Management World. And um, so congratulations on that. And I, first, I thought we'd just start off by asking you to tell us a bit about Burst. And, and Burst 5X and, and why it is you're winning uh, awards and, and what makes Burst different to others in the business intelligence industry? Sure, sure. Um, well, first of all, we're a cloud-based business intelligence and analytics provider, which in and of itself is, is different from the traditional legacy approaches that people have. Mm -hmm. uh, but the interesting thing is this, this, this sector is, uh, is split right now. There are uh, folks that, that uh, offer solutions that allow IT to push stuff out to end users in the, in, in, in the organization, but those things tend to be slow and, and very difficult to use, and mm -hmm. quite, right, right now the popularity isn't real high. And then there's a bunch of stuff that people can use on their desktop, but those don't have any consistency or any, any legitimacy across the organization. They're very difficult to scale, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it tends to be chaos in the organization. And the nice thing about cloud is it unites both of those two approaches to BI, which are right now splitting most organizations and causing all sorts of problems. So what Burst is able to do is really bring those approaches together and allow an organization to have a really cohesive approach to both centralized data management and, and, and uh, business intelligence along with decentralized use of data in an organization today. And we think that that's quite novel, and uh, well, we know it's quite novel, and uh, it's really opening up a lot of the barriers that have prevented BI from, from being more broadly adopted in, in, in organizations today. And I think that's, you know, the, the award uh, is around our UI, mm -hmm. which, which is really about uh, taking that data infrastructure that blends both centralized data managed by IT and uh -huh. decentralized data managed by uh, departments and end users around the organization and puts a user experience on top of them that is that allows everyone in the organization to be both a producer and a consumer. It's not really about some set of folks producing stuff and some set of folks consume it. It's everybody should organically be contributing to the use of knowledge in an organization. And I think uh, uh, KM World's you know, huge in the industry. They've been uh -huh. around for a long time. They understand what they're doing. Uh, and we're quite pleased that they, that they they recognized our product for that. Wonderful. So what brings you to Australia this week? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, we have operations here in Australia and mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to uh, to do two things. One is we're, we're publicly announcing our new data center in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, which is available this quarter. And uh, we're also uh, you know, publicly uh, announcing a couple of customers that, uh, that we're working with down here. And I understand that uh, for a business intelligence company, this is uh, opening a, a local Australian data center as a first. Uh, it is. It is, uh, and it's it's. You know, we've we've gotten obviously tremendous interest by by local local firms to have something here. There are. A variety of data residency concerns. People mm -hmm. want to have their data in country, not not uh, not not just in Asia, but they want it here in, in Australia. And so, it's been important for us to, to acknowledge that and mm -hmm. and, uh, and proactively, uh, you know, bring our operations here. And the good news about being in the cloud is that uh, it allows us to maintain the same consistency in operations we do globally. We have other points of presence in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. uh, but do it here so the data that, that that folks use in our public cloud never leaves Australia. So how long ago did Burst start uh, in the US and how long have you been here in Australia? And what are some of the local Australian customers' names that you can share that people would recognize? So the ones that uh, we're announcing, so we've been in, in, in the US operating uh, with customers since 2006. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so we've, we're, we're all over, we're, we're a global company at uh -huh. this point. We, uh, we've got customers in, in, in most major markets at this point. Uh, in Australia, uh, we're announcing two customers in particular, IAG and uh, page up people these they're, they, they're both uh, they represent kind of different uh, different types of organizations uh, you know, one's a, a software provider that's providing cloud infrastructure for, for uh, HR and recruitment and talent uh, uh, in not only in Australia but but uh, in the region but also uh, IAG is a major obviously insurance provider locally so you have you know uh, businesses that have been around for a long time mm -hmm. newer fast growing ones and uh, we're excited about both of them. And, and when did the Australian operations start up? Uh, we've had customers here longer than we've had operations. formal operations yeah, here, yeah. because that's the beauty of the cloud is you can you can operate remotely. But we've actually physically been here for about eighteen months. Now, are, are you still coming across you know larger companies that you know have only been doing BI in a very primitive way or haven't really done it at all or are, are most, most companies most companies have made an attempt in but fact, they're now needing to upgrade and yeah, get to the next and, level and in a former life I've, I've actually spent some time in Australia 
uh, you know, with the product line, which is now Oracle's product line. So uh, it, people have been using quite analytics and BI yeah. here in, here for, for quite some time. Um, but the same, the, 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 and actually, we, I think Australia is actually uh, pound for pound a bit more progressive in its use of data and analytics than, than one might expect. It's, it's not, uh, you know, while the population may not be as large as other places, um, you know, we do see a higher concentration, a higher use of data and analytics here than, than, we, than we might see even in the States. So, so what are the typical things holding companies <clears throat> back from really, really taking advantage of all this data? It's hard. It's hard. Uh, you know, the, the approaches that are, that are out there today, it, it's never easy, um, but the approaches that are out there today solve only a piece of the, of the problem and um, you know, they really cater towards these giant monolithic centralized approaches to, to pushing data out to people. And I think what we've learned over the last 10 or 15 years is that um, that process of having to run everything through a centralized organization before you can get information out to people is just too heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Organizations want to run lean. Um, they want to have data available organically. They want to be able to allow uh, or, uh, individuals to self-serve, but they still need um, trusted data in the organization. And that, that blend of how do you how do you manage both really hasn't been something that's been achievable. So a lot of organizations have said we're going to put up the few things that we really, really, really have to have, uh -huh. oftentimes for compliance reasons, um, and then everything else it's a food fight. Go use Excel and, and go have fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so really, the, the opportunity the cloud brings is to say, okay, no, 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 let's let's, let's put some organization structure around that next level of information in the organization and, and, and even let's bring in edge, you've got your core applications, but we also have edge data around the organizations. Let's blend those two together and allow organizations to build a much more cohesive picture of, of how their businesses are operating. So Burst is obviously making it much easier for, for large companies Absolutely. to integrate multiple Absolutely. data sources into a BI system Absolutely. for multiple users. I mean, they, they want this it, to work effortlessly. Absolutely. I mean, this, this vision has always been out there of providing data as a service internally in an organization. And if you think about data as a service, well, that's a SaaS thing. That's a fundamentally cloud process. So you can't do that with a solution that's not cloud. Mm -hmm. These single instance, single use legacy providers where let's take a slug and, and offer that up as a dashboard or as an individual set of reports. That's nice. But that's not offering your data infrastructure as a cafe of, of information for people to pick and choose from and leverage as they need. Well, it's eliminating that's, the, the, that's something that requires a cloud infrastructure. It's, it's eliminating the siloing of data in different departments and it's, it's finally bringing all those people together. It, it's, it's connecting the silos. I think the idea of, of creating one giant repository, that, that, that hasn't worked. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you can create a giant repository for some of some bits. Uh, some organizations have largely given up on that completely, and they're just okay. It's silos everywhere. But yeah. I think the notion of the cloud is it allows you to network things. You know, that's Ooh. one of the great advances in the last ten years that cloud has brought is new business models that allow you to network all sorts of stuff. Well, we're in the business of networking data, bring, bring, making those silos, and now connecting those silos into think of it as an organic data warehouse yeah. that grew independently. Now, security is always a hot topic. We're always hearing about the latest hack. So you know what is doing what is Burst doing to manage security for your hosted solution and give companies you know rock solid um, <coughs> assurances? There, I, that's a long, long yeah. question. <laughs> uh, you know we we have about you know eight or nine major certifications. We get audited all the time. Where you know there's all sorts of security scanning and, and intrusion detection. We, we follow best practices and policies. Um, you know security is something you got to live and breathe and, yeah. and, and do the best you can. And, and you know. Uh, my only, you know, point on that is um, the, the the benefit of the cloud, as far as that goes, is it's kind of like the bank, where you know every now and then someone tries to rob a bank. I get that, but the bank is a heck of a lot safer than keeping your money at home. And so, um, it was built for that purpose. And uh, you know, we don't have employees walking around with laptops with data on it that that, that are our customers. Um, whereas most organizations do, and those, mm -hmm. those employees know what that data is, and so they're more likely to lose it. With us, uh, we're disinterested. We're a disinterested third party. Um, and so there's a lot of things that, 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 that make the cloud, I would say, inherently more safe. Um, but there's also a lot of uh, regulatory and, 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 uh, uh, and auditing things that we do to help folks understand what it is that we're doing to make data safe. Now, with uh, hybrid cloud being one of the big buzzwords, what percentage of customers are opting either for on-premise deployments versus cloud-based deployments versus hybrid deployments? I think hybrid is the majority mm -hmm. of, of things that we see, and that's actually one of the technological uh, advantages that Burst brings to the market is we, um, we see data in, in a couple of different forms in an organization, data that's already ready for analytics, in which case, don't move it, leave it, leave it on-prem and just play with it. 
uh, in which case we'll connect to it and leverage it where it sits and the cloud will just be the place where people uh, interact with it um, which is which is fine that that, that works great um, it performs beautifully life is good however generally that that represents a minority of data in in a larger organization so there's other bits of data we have technology that if you do load data into into our cloud um, we not only load it, but we manipulate it and turn it into what we would call user-ready data, data that's, that's, that's ready for users to slice and dice and, and, and explore and analyze and uh -huh. answer those analytical and questions. And data mine to get Exactly, so, and, and, and we can bring both of them together in a hybrid fashion. And so the idea is move only what you need to move, leverage what you got, but to the extent that you need to feather in new things and create a more integrated picture, we can support that. So, uh, you know, just about your Australian customers and I, and I guess how it compares to the US and the rest of the world, you know, you, you've explained that we are embrace, embracing cloud, but, but it's still it's a it's a growth market. It's not a mature market. So, are there any common features of enterprises that are adopting cloud? Any yeah. more advice for Australian businesses? Any any Australian learnings that you can take back to some of your U.S. customers to say, hey, the Aussies are doing it. And um, you know, anything else you'd like to tell us uh, just about the, you know the Australian uh, market and, and what you've um, learned from us? Uh, you know, I don't I don't think the Australian market's any you know any further ahead or behind. Uh, the U.S. market. In fact, I'd probably say um, I think the readiness is is actually is, is actually probably further ahead. The, the U.S. is a very very diverse place, and you, you know, I come from the Valley, but where you know everyone's racing to these kinds of things. But there are parts of the U.S. that you know are are at a different point in the, sure. in the, in the curve. So um, what I like about Australia is it, it's a very focused market, um, and so people uh, the community is pretty tight, and people understand. You know where the state of the market is at any given point in time, and move in a, in a fairly coordinated fashion. Um, the cloud is the cloud is not new from for certainly for applications. I think that's gone completely mainstream everywhere. Yeah. Um, what is newer is cloud BI and analytics, and this this notion of what do I do with data that isn't already in the cloud, and uh, that's where we're kind of on the earlier stage of the curve, and that's where these hybrid solutions that we talked about. Are really helping organizations embrace the cloud, even if not all the data is already in the cloud. Can you uh, tell us where you think Burst will be in the next twelve months, and then the industry and, and Burst say over the next five to ten years? Um, that's that's hard to say because the industry keeps changing. Sure. But um, we're growing, we're growing quite rapidly, and uh, you know our, our our plan is to uh, is to really be uh, the the next gen choice for large enterprises. There are. You know, lots of legacy choices that are out there, and everybody's familiar with the pain associated with those. Mm -hmm. um, as far as next gen, you know, we're focusing on the enterprise. There are other folks that are focusing on simple use cases and you know, small departments or individuals, and that's fine. There's a ton of that out there. But in terms of embracing the enterprise and enterprise needs, you know, that's that's kind of that's kind of where we're uh, you know where we're focused, and we think we're we're unique in that sense. So, so the last couple of questions, I always like to change gears a little bit towards the end, and just ask if you could please share the best piece of advice. That you've ever received to help you get you where you are today? Uh, got a lot of advice. Everyone, uh, everyone always thinks that they know sure. <laughs> what you should be doing, and there's a lot of back. As we'd say in the state, states, backseat quarterbacks. Sure. Um, I think the funniest advice that I got, uh, maybe not the best advice, um, was by my co-founder's father. This is a man who actually had started several companies himself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he did the Polycom and Picture Tell and some of the some of the mobile uh, or some of the the. the the interactive voice and the video things that that, uh, that we all use today. Mm. Um, he said, as we started the company, of, of all the things you do, avoid death. It's an it's an important thing. <laughs> and I thought that's pretty obvious, right? But you know what? The interesting thing that that actually has borne out because mm. um, this is an industry, cloud and BI. Everyone, uh, you know, kind of intuitively believes that those two things should go together. But it's been a long time before the market has actually grown to embrace that as a mainstream thing. Five, six years ago, it's pretty fringe. Mm. And so it's, it, was, it was important for us to continue to, while the market was not quite there yet, to continue to invest, you know, focus on our core sets of customers, building our technology. It wasn't something we did overnight, but wait and be able to support the industry once the industry came our way, and, and, and now we're here. And so to some extent, you know, he nailed it. Yeah. So do you have any final messages for ITY viewers and readers and for your current and future customers? Uh, I just uh, I'd say that you know, the, the world is moving quickly. Uh, take a look. There's a lot, a lot of things that you probably have taken for granted that couldn't be done. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the thing about our industry is it's been around for a long time, so there's a lot of preconceived notions about what should be done and, 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 and uh, how things are done. Talk to us, because uh, I, I think we can shatter some of those notions. There's some things that you can do with the cloud that you simply cannot do. 
uh, with, with pure legacy on-premise solutions. Brad, thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Australia. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. See you later.